There were no mirrors in my nana's house. No mirrors in my nana's house. There were no mirrors in my nana's house. No mirrors in my nana's house. And the beauty that I saw in everything, the beauty in everything, yeah, it was in her eyes. Oh, it was in her eyes. This year I've been doing a series of sermons on Unitarians, Universalists, and Unitarian Universalists who have made a difference. And this is my last one of that series. But it's a good one, because we're honoring today Dr. Esai Barnwell and her music. And here she is. Esai Marie Barnwell was born February 29, 1946, in New York City. I found a picture of New York City about that time. That was the skyline. Eastside Barnwell. Now, this is what she says about her parents. Irving Frederick Barnwell was my father. He was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1897 and came to New York City during his adolescence and remained there until his passing in 1992. First and foremost, he was a musician and pedagogue whose instruments were violin, viola, and piano. He was a member of the Coolidge Taylor String Quartet in Harlem and also had a trio. He taught violin and piano, and one of his most accomplished students, in addition to his daughter, was Lysel Atkinson, whom he taught from the age of four until he was admitted to the Manhattan Conservatory of Music. So this is where he got this music side, was she got this from her father, who was a great musician. But she had another side as well, and that comes from her mother. Marcella Robinson Barnwell. At the age of 21, my mother left her home in Los Angeles and traveled alone to New York City to enter one of two colored schools of nursing, the Lincoln School. So there I found a picture of her mom back, I guess, when she was still in California, lying on the beaches. She left that life and came to New York City, and she became a registered nurse. So that side of Eastside Barnwell, where she got into a lot of service, and you'll hear about that later, helping people, came from her mother. Here's a picture, a wedding picture of her parents together. And here are some pictures when she was very young that I found. There her father is teaching her to play the violin. She started at two and a half years of old, two and a half years, learning to play the violin. And she kept taking music lessons from her dad for 15 years. There she is playing a little bit older and by the piano. Then here she is as a teenager playing the guitar. Naturally, that's what teens want to do a little bit more of, so she switched to guitar. Now, you would think someone that had taken music lessons all of her life since she was two and a half would stay in music, but her education shows that she did not stay in music. And here's what her education was like. She um, did major in music in high school. She had a high school where she could spend lots of time with that, but her bachelor and master of science degrees were in speech <coughs> pathology. She became very interested in that. Then she got a doctor of philosophy in speech pathology. So she went all the way through in speech pathology. Then that was in 1975. And then in 1981, she got a master of science in public health from Howard University. So after she got a doctor of philosophy, a PhD, she went back and got another master's degree. A lot of education looking at especially with speech, our speech and language, and speech pathology, and helping people in that area. Um, also, she has many, she has a lot more degrees, too, because she got honorary degrees. <coughs> oh, after she did so many wonderful things, said, we want to honor her. So she got honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from her alma mater, Sunny in Genesco, New York, from the Virginia Theological Seminary, from uh, my alma mater, Meadville Lombard Theological Seminary, and from the Chicago Theological Seminary. So you can see how well thought of she was that all of these folks would want her to come to get and give her an honorary doctorate because they were so proud of her. And then more recently, she uh, 
this was not in her bio, but I found this on the internet, that she had received from Star King an honorary degree, a doctor of sacred theology. With gratitude and humility, and by vote of the Board of Trustees, Star King School for the Ministry hereby awards to Dr. Ezai M. Barnwell the degree of Sakrai Theologi Doctor. from both UU theological schools. That's how much we think of her and what she's done for her, us. And, she, and we like to claim her. She is one of us. Well, what about her work? For over a decade, Dr. Barnum was a professor at the College of Dentistry at Howard University. And also, she was an administrator of public health programs at Children's Hospital National Medical Center and at Gallaudet University uh, for the Deaf in Washington, D.C., so she spent much of her career doing these kinds of things. But in 1977, Barnwell founded the All Souls Jubilee Singer. Now, All Souls, there are a lot of you churches called All Souls, but this All Souls church is the one in Washington, D.C., and that's where she's a member. And so she got together, a group and called them the Jubilee Singers. Uh, well, someone came from Sweet Honey in the Rock, came and heard them, and in 1979, she was invited to join the world-renowned a cappella ensemble Sweet Honey in the Rock. Many of those singers stayed with them in and out. She stayed with them the longest time. She started with them in 1979, and she did not retire until 2013. So uh, many of the recordings you hear, you'll hear a strong bass. That's her. That's her, when you hear that strong bass. And this is a picture of Sweet Honey in the Rock, and she is on the left. That's her on the left. Now I'm going to let you hear her a little bit, where she's explaining a little bit about her teaching and what she does when she comes to these community things, and about listening. This is her sharing a little on this. One time somebody came back and they said, I took your class last year, and I learned how to swim. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can't really make sense out of that, but this person made sense out of that. But I think it just gave her a sense. I mean, people learn how to lead a song. They learn how to take a risk. They learn how to take a stand on certain things. They learn that there are communities where they can express the things that they care about. Everybody should sing. If you show up, you are just automatically a part of the choir. Walking through the door is your addition. So you don't have to do anything else but just be present and participate. We start out just doing traditional African rhythms and having people sing the rhythms and play them on bells and drums and get the sense of how parts come together and the sense of how when things come together in a really right relationship, that they actually create a bigger melody than anybody is playing or singing. And that's one of the fundamental principles that I like people to get out of this, that, you know, that we listen to each other, that we, when we listen, we don't need a conductor necessarily. We can really make our parts fit and that bigger things happen. You know, if you look at how we engage each other in society, when we are really listening and really finding ways to work together, we can build new policies, new legislation, new communities. We can do that. Um, so I want people to have a deeply penetrating experience of the music, a deep understanding of the traditions that undergird that. Um, I want people to find their voices I want them to have the experience of hearing their voices in the group with other voices and hearing how wonderful that is. And then I want them to move the microcosm into the macrocosm so that they move here and feel empowered to do other things. Eastside Barnwell does a lot of rearranging and uh, of other folks' songs like we did with Kumbaya and other, uh, other songs, she, uh, she brings an element to it that wasn't there before. She has those arrangements. Actually, you can, you can get these in a book so a fine choir can do them just right. 
But all of us can join in in, in, in her spirit of how she does them. But she's also written some songs. She has composed some of her own. One of them was the one we heard during the children's story, uh, There Are No Mirrors in My Nana's House. Another one that has become quite popular that she composed is called We Are. And it is a song that goes back and shares about, you know, you're not just Janice Cawthorn and Tara Burton. You're all these people in your background. All your ancestors all the way back have given you not only genes, but taught things and passed them down. We are our grandfather's children, our grandmother's children. We have all of that within us. So I'm going to let you hear we are. But I'm going to show it to you in a little different way than just them singing it. Uh, when Esai Barnwell first started with Sweet Honey in the Rock, because she knew sign language, of course, with all her work with the deaf, she started signing with them with American Sign Language, which is beautiful. And they realized how important that was. So they started hiring someone who would just do signing while the others, including her, would sing. And what I found on YouTube was a young girl who took their music and did signing to it. And it's quite beautiful. So listen to their words, but watch her sign as well. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We our grandmother's prayers We are Our grandmother's dreamings We are The breath of the ancestors We are The spirit of God We are mothers of courage Fathers of time Daughters of dust Sons of great visions We're sisters of mercy Brothers of love, lovers of light, and builders of nations, we are seekers of truth, and keepers of faith, makers of peace, wisdom of ages, we are our grandmother's prayers, we are our grandfather's dreamings, we are the breath of the Ancestors, we are the spirit of God. We're mothers of courage and fathers of time. We're daughters of dust and sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We're lovers of light and builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We're makers of peace and wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of the ancestors. We are the spirit of God for each child. Sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the Ending with We Are One. Now, you may have noticed as we played these songs, you don't hear a piano or an organ in the background. This is truly, they, it, an, Sweet Honey in the Rock is an a cappella group. How many of you have ever been to hear them in a concert? Oh, we have quite a few folks. Yeah, that's great. It's just terrific. Because they end up, sometimes you say, well, I know I hear an instrument. 
but it's their voices bringing all those instrumentation into it. It all comes their voices. Now, one thing they do use, though, is some percussion. They will bring in some percussion instruments, and you'll hear them as well. But this is one of my favorites. Now, one of the recent things she did, she got a lot of attention because someone asked her to, um, if she could do an arrangement of the Star Spangled Banner that would be a little more African-American centered, maybe. Uh, this is especially interesting considering the, uh, uh, the sports uh, boycott and the kneeling and things like that. So she said, well, then she's ready for the challenge. So I think this was before that happened. She's ready for the challenge to try to take the Star Spangled Banner and to do something with it that, uh, that folks could listen to. Now, I will not ask you to stand for this unless you feel like you have to, because I want you to listen to the words and listen to the arrangement, listen to the rhythm, and see what she has done with this. Um, this is her with the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, see. folks were very brave and, and bringing it back to the bravery of the slave people that were enslaved and others or something, you know. She said, somebody asked her about that, she said, that's one way to think about it, but there are parallel ways you can think about you bringing it in the home of the brave. Sometimes that's what people call Native Americans, sometimes in a derogatory word and sometimes not, but either way, it's also a reminder that this was the home, their home as well. So she's done different kinds of things with this song uh, to really make us think. So uh, wouldn't it be interesting to be at a ball game and have her sing the Star Spangled Banner? Here are four axioms that have proven significant in Barnwell's life. And you've heard these before. She didn't make these up. But she says these are the things that guide her. Read with me. To whom much is given, much is required. 
That's one thing we all need to keep in mind. Here's another. As one door closes, another door opens. Another. Everything matters. And last, say yes. Say yes to life. Say yes when I ask you to do something here today. I hope it's time to volunteer. But be open to saying yes. Say yes. I'm going to close with another one of her songs. It's called Breaths. And um, I'm going to uh, ask you also to try to, as you hear it, sing along with this as well. This song um, is adapted from a poem. So it wasn't a song that she adapted, but a poem by Borrego Diop. And the song is talking about what happens when people die. She first heard the poem at a memorial service. And then since she's done the songs, people have been singing this sometimes at memorial services. And you know, we all know ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We know what happens with our bodies, you know. But in each of us, there's also an energy. We have energy within us. We have heat within us. We have breath within us, spirit, if you will, soul, if you will, depending on your own theology. Nothing goes away completely. Everything goes somewhere. Where do all of these things go? They go into the universe, into the wind, into the trees, into the waters. And she says, you know, if we would listen to these things, we can get messages from our ancestors or from the sacred. I find that true. Um, I'm a religious naturalist, but I know that when I walk across the pond dam, if I don't have, if I'm not listening to a book, you know, and just listening to nature, listening to the wind come through the leaves, if I'm walking on the beach and listening to the waves, I can sometimes get things I don't automatically get. Maybe I'm getting them from my ancestors or from my heart. I'm not saying where it's coming from, but I can tune in. I can tune in. And that is what this is about. Listen more often to things than to beings. Don't just listen to these TV heads. Go out and listen to nature. So I'm going to start this, and I'll let you just join in. Now, at the end of this, you'll hear them lifting up at the very end of this, they'll be lifting up names of musicians, their musical ancestors that have died. And I invite you to lift up folks perhaps that were in this congregation or in your family. Lift up folks that you know and love that have died as well while they're lifting up these musicians. Uh, this is the one, Eric, I think if you want to play a little bit drum. And um, also we have... Um, you can clap along, hum along. I've got a little little uh, music stick from uh, Chile that we can make some sounds of the water. Breaths. <laughs> Listen the more often to things than to these. Tis the ancestor's breath who in the fire's voice is heard. Tis the ancestor's breath in the voice of the waters. Those who have died have never, never left. They are in the groaning woods They are in the crying grass And they are in the moaning rocks The dead are not under the earth So I listen no more often To things than to these Listen no more often To things than to these 
sister's breath Who in the fire's voice is heard Tis the ancestor's breath In the voice of the water Listen no more often to the things that to be Listen no more often to the things that to be Tis the ancestor's breath When the pine's voice is fair Tis the ancestor's breath In the voice of the world Miriam McCabe, Nina Simone, Odetta, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holland, Abby Lincoln, Connie McGuire, Billy Simon, Amen. That's the thing.